Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome everyone to Essential Documentation and Clinical Trials at Research Sites. My name is Marla Helley. I'll be your trainer today. I'm going to go ahead and get started just to let you know a little bit about myself. I have quite a bit of experience in clinical research, but most importantly, I've also had some lessons learned that I can bring to the session as well. I am going to read the learning objectives. You can see the information here on the slide. And what we are going to learn by having you attend this course today is we're going to define the clinical research essential document. Also, we're going to determine essential subject and non-subject specific documentation that's required for clinical research or clinical trials. We're going to discuss the essential documentation for drug versus device versus combination products. We're also going to prepare for a regulatory inspection, so looking proactively and looking at how we can use our essential documents to support a clinical trial. Let's look at clinical research and essential documentation. So what exactly are essential documents? Well, we can look at what the ICH defines as essential documents. And they are those documents that individually and collectively permit the evaluation of the conduct of a trial. So right there, we start to see just how important these essential documents are because they are going to help us see what happened during the conduct of the trial. It also gives the quality of the data produced. So now we're linking this to support the data. And these documents serve to demonstrate the compliance of the investigator, the sponsor, and the monitor with the standards of GCP and with all applicable regulatory requirements. When we think of source documents, our investigator, training logs, monitoring reports, signature logs, investigational product and accountability, but the source documents are part of the essential documents as well. So all of this together is supporting what occurs during the course of the study. And when we think about our essential documents, they are helping us tell the story of what goes on during the course of the study. So if all of us decided today that we say we, went, we won the lottery and we are no longer going to be working where we're employed and we put in our notice with our employer, if we did a good job documenting what occurred during the course of the study, we should not have any gaps. We should be able to clearly understand who was that investigator? How do we select that investigator? So we could have documentation such as supporting documents for a site qual visit, also their medical licensure, their CV, demonstrating that they're qualified by training to participate, let's say, in an oncology study if that was the therapeutic area. The problem is, is that Sometimes we have gaps in our storytelling. How many of you have ever seen the gap in the story that was written for a study? Those of you that are auditors may sometimes have questions about, well, what's happening? So if you've seen gaps, give a check mark. It becomes difficult to understand who did what and when. Who was assigned? When were they assigned? So Jenny said, absolutely. Sarah's giving a check mark as well, along with Leslie. And so that's the important aspect. We need to make sure we have good documentation. And we know if it's not documented, it didn't happen. 